Thank you very much, uh, Professor Neugebauer, for the introduction and the invitation uh, to this conference. Ten years of World Sepsis Day is really a great achievement, and I would like, first of all, to congratulate the team for developing the World Sepsis Day from a local event to a global movement. This photo was taken ten years ago during our first World Sepsis Day event in Jena, and uh, more than a decade later, it is... Uh, as important as ever to raise awareness for sepsis, as the burden of sepsis and sepsis equally is still high and even often underestimated. And this is exactly what my talk is about. I would like to give you an insight on the um, epidemiology of sepsis at COVID-19 in Germany and talk about what we know and even similarly important what we don't know yet. Uh, when we talk about the burden of sepsis in Germany, uh, our knowledge is mainly derived from two sources. First of all, there are different point prevalence studies among ICU patients which show that sepsis is very common in the ICU. The point prevalence in 2013 was 18% uh, among ICU patients. Most sepsis cases were hospital acquired and uh, resulted from lower respiratory tract infections and uh, the most common causative pathogens were gram-negative. The ICU mortality in sepsis patients was 34% compared to 6% in uh, ICU patients without sepsis, and the hospital mortality was 40%. In the survival curve on the right, you can see that within the first 30, 40 days after sepsis onset, nearly half of patients died. So the acute mortality of sepsis is really high in Germany. Uh, on the other hand, analysis of nationwide hospital discharge data um, shed light on the sepsis incidence uh, in the hospital and on a population level. In 2016, around 150 um, hospitalizations were due or with sepsis. Uh, also, this is equal to around 1% of hospitalizations, 14% of hospital deaths were sepsis related. Um, of note, uh, half of patients were treated outside the ICU on normal wards, and contrary to ICU patients, most sepsis cases were community acquired. Um, the nationwide incidence was uh, 178 per 100,000 inhabitants, and um, it varied around ninefold between German districts. But to a certain degree, this variation uh, can be explained by differences in age structure and uh, socioeconomic um, indicators and health capacity. But beyond that, we really still uh, lack an understanding of these um, differences. To some degree, um, the differences might mirror also um, variation in sepsis coding. And um, because what we measure in administrative data is the incidence of uh, diagnosed and coded sepsis. And validation studies have shown that uh, sepsis is often identified in hospital discharge data with a low sensitiv sensitivity and many cases are missed. So the incidence of sepsis is um, underestimated in this data and the true burden still remains unknown. Uh, similarly, um, we don't know uh, exactly which impact the um, COVID-19 pandemic had on the sepsis incidence. Um, analysis of hospital discharge data also showed that the absolute uh, number of sepsis cases dropped by uh, 23% between 2019 and 2020. Uh, which may be due to a decrease of lower respiratory tract infections from other um, pathogens than COVID-19 and a decrease in elective surgeries, for example. But in 2020, uh, the coding of uh, sepsis changed within the German ICD and there is no possibility to code sepsis as a complication of COVID-19. So it's difficult to interpret uh, the dynamics. 
because indeed um, sepsis is often a complication of COVID-19. Um, a comprehensive meta-analysis uh, showed that around one-third of uh, patients hospitalized with COVID-19 fulfill the criteria for sepsis. Um, in Germany in 2020, there were um, 1.8 million COVID-19 cases, uh, around 170,000 COVID-19 hospitalizations and 36,000 um, COVID-related ICU treatments. Um, so that would result in a potential 55,000 COVID-related sepsis cases, but still uh, we don't have exact numbers about that. Let me stress one other point. Um, sepsis is not only a burdensome in terms of the acute mortality, um, survivors often suffer from long-term um, cognitive, psychological and physical impairments. And we performed a study using health claims data of around uh, one third of the German population in the so-called sepsis project, uh, where we found that three out of four survivors suffer from new um, impairments in the year after sepsis, and uh, that um, one third of survivors, which were uh, not dependent on nursing care, required formal or informal nursing care in the year after. And uh, the post-acute mortality was really high, with 30% of hospital survivors dying in the year after sepsis. Uh, most common impairments were neuromuscular diagnosis and uh, cardiovascular diseases, um, but also uh, depression and cognitive impairments were very common. Uh, interestingly, um, impairments did not only affect uh, patients with severe sepsis, but also with non-severe sepsis, sepsis treated on normal wards, and um, patients without pre-existing impairments. And that is similar what we see in COVID-19 survivors, where an estimated 8 to 17 percent of survivors suffered from, from long, long COVID, even after mild causes of the disease. Uh, and even if COVID-19 uh, may cause specific uh, sequelae, um, survivors at co at, of COVID-19 and sepsis um, may face the same challenges and there is a huge demand for aftercare, for example, screening for uh, new impairments, early follow-up in the outpatient uh, setting and referral to structured rehabilitation care. So let me summarize, uh, the burden of sepsis and sepsis sequelae is high in Germany with thousands of patients affected every year. Uh, we lack data to really understand the timely dynamics and the impact of COVID-19. Um, and there is a need of data beyond uh, health claims data for clinical data, for example, from health, electronic health records, registries and further prospective studies. With that, I would like to finish and thank you for your attention.